the Symphony No. 9 in E minor, from the New World, Op. 95, B 178, Czech, Symphony C. 9 E moll Z Noviho Sveta, popularly known as the New World Symphony, was composed by Antonin Dvorak in 1893 while he was the director of the National Conservatory of Music of America from 1892 to 1895. It is by far his most popular symphony, and one of the most popular of all symphonies. In older literature and recordings, this symphony was, as for its first publication, numbered as Symphony No. 5. Astronaut Neil Armstrong took a tape recording of the New World Symphony along during the Apollo 11 mission, the first moon landing, in 1969. The symphony was completed in the building that now houses the Billy Clocks Museum. Topic instrumentation This symphony is scored for the following orchestra, two flutes one doubling piccolo two oboes one doubling English horn two clarinets in B-flat and a two bassoons four horns in E, C and F two trumpets in E, C and E-flat alto trombone tenor trombone bass trombone tuba second movement only timpani triangle third movement only cymbals fourth movement only strings Topic. Movements The piece has four movements. Topic. Influences Dvorak was interested in Native American music and the African American spirituals he heard in North America. While director of the National Conservatory he encountered an African-American student, Harry T. Burley, who sang traditional spirituals to him. Burley, later a composer himself, said that Dvorak had absorbed their «spirit» before writing his own melodies. Dvorak stated, I am convinced that the future music of this country must be founded on what are called Negro melodies. These can be the foundation of a serious and original school of composition, to be developed in the United States. These beautiful and varied themes are the product of the soil. They are the folk songs of America and your composers must turn to them. The symphony was commissioned by the New York Philharmonic, and premiered on 16 December 1893, at Carnegie Hall conducted by Anton Seidel. A day earlier, in an article published in the New York Herald on 15 December 1893, Dvorak further explained how Native American music influenced his symphony. I have not actually used any of the Native American melodies. I have simply written original themes embodying the peculiarities of the Indian music, and, using these themes as subjects, have developed them with all the resources of modern rhythms, counterpoint, and orchestral color. In the same article, Dvorak stated that he regarded the symphony's second movement as a sketch or study for a later work, either a cantata or opera, which will be based upon Longfellow's Hiawatha. Dvorak never actually wrote such a piece. He also wrote that the third movement scherzo was suggested by the scene at the feast in Hiawatha where the Indians dance. In 1893, a newspaper interview quoted Dvorak as saying, "...I found that the music of the Negroes and of the Indians was practically identical and that the music of the two races bore a remarkable similarity to the music of Scotland." Most historians agree that Dvorak is referring to the pentatonic scale, which is typical of each of these musical traditions. In a 2008 article in the Chronicle of Higher Education, prominent musicologist Joseph Horowitz asserts that African American spirituals were a major influence on Dvorak's music written in North America, quoting him from an 1893 interview in the New York Herald as saying, in the Negro melodies of America I discover all that is needed for a great and noble school of music." Dvorak did, it seems, borrow rhythms from the music of his native Bohemia, as notably in his Slavonic dances, and the pentatonic scale in some of his music written in North America from African American and or Native American sources. Statements that he borrowed melodies are often made but seldom supported by specifics. One verified example is the Song of the Scarlet Tanager in the Quartet. 
Michael Steinberg writes that a flute solo theme in the first movement of the symphony resembles the spiritual, swing low, sweet chariot. Leonard Bernstein averred that the symphony was truly multinational in its foundations. Dvorak was influenced not only by music he had heard, but by what he had seen, in America. He wrote that he would not have composed his American pieces as he had, if he had not seen America. It has been said that Dvorak was inspired by the American, wide open spaces, such as prairies he may have seen on his trip to Iowa in the summer of 1893. Notices about several performances of the symphony include the phrase, wide open spaces, about what inspired the symphony and or about the feelings it conveys to listeners. Dvorak was also influenced by the style and techniques used by earlier classical composers, including Beethoven and Schubert. The falling fourths and timpani strokes in the New World Symphony's Scherzo movement evokes the scherzo of Beethoven's Choral Symphony. Symphony no. 9. The use of flashbacks to prior movements in the New World Symphony's last movement is reminiscent of Beethoven quoting prior movements in the opening presto of the Choral Symphony's final movement. Reception At the premiere in Carnegie Hall, the end of every movement was met with thunderous clapping and Dvorak felt obliged to stand up and bow. This was one of the greatest public triumphs of Dvorak's career. When the symphony was published, several European orchestras soon performed it. Alexander Mackenzie conducted the London Philharmonic Society in the European premiere on 21 June 1894. Clapham says the symphony became, "...one of the most popular of all time." And at a time when the composer's main works were being welcomed in no more than ten countries, this symphony reached the rest of the musical world and has become a universal favorite. It had been performed as of 1978 more often than any other symphony at the Royal Festival Hall, London, and is in tremendous demand in Japan. Topic: <laughs> Going home. The theme from the Largo was adapted into the spiritual-like song, Goin' Home, often mistakenly considered a folk song or traditional spiritual by Dvorak's pupil William Arms Fisher, who wrote the lyrics in 1922. 